Today we are going to be talking about um, more exponential and logistic modeling. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit more about the exponential population model. Again, this is going to be your final population. This is your initial population. This is the rate at which it's going and expressed as a decimal. And T is time. All right, so it says the 2000 population of Las Vegas, Nevada was 478,000 and is increasing at the rate of 6.28% each year. At that rate, when will the population be a million? Well, what they're trying to figure out is they want the population to be a million. The initial population was 478,000 times 1 plus my rate would be 0 0.0628 to the T. So I can clean that up a little bit and say a million one, two, three, four, five, six, equals 478,000 times 1.0628 to the T. So there's my population model for Las Vegas, Nevada, okay, in the year 2000. Now, you have a couple of choices here. You could, well, no, you can't solve this algebraically. At this point, remember, you don't know how to get to solve for your variable when your variable is the exponent. We've never asked you to do that before. And that's what we are going to learn logarithms for is to solve these algebraically. But at this point, we don't have those tools. So you're going to type in a million for y1 and this equation for y2 and you can see where I set my window at and where they intersect is when x is 12.11922 y will be a million. So what that means is it's going to take approximately 12 years. Now, but they want to know when will the population be a million. Well, if the year was 2000 when this data was gathered, then 12 years later would be 2012 would be my answer. Okay? All right, so this one says the population of Smallville. Sorry, that's not, I don't know why those are there. It's not supposed to be there. Oh, I think I forgot to animate it. Anyway, sorry. So it says the population of Smallville in the year 1890 was 6250. Assume the population increased at a rate of 2.75% a year. It says estimate the population in 1915 and in 1940. Well, if I set up my um, equation, it says the population at a certain time will be the initial population, which was 6250 times 1 plus the rate, which would be 0 0.0275 to the T. So this is going to be 6250, 1.0275 to the T. Now, you have a couple of choices here. You can, we're trying to estimate the population in 1915. So though, that's my time, but you don't put 1915. That would be um, 1,915 years later, what's the population? That's not what we're trying to figure out. 1915, they got to give us the time. The time for this was 1890. So if I'm trying to figure out how many years have gone by between 1890 and 1915, then I subtract. Okay, so I take 1915 minus 1890, that's 25 years later. So, to figure out for 1915, I would take P of 25 years, which would be 6250, 1.0275 to the 10th. If you type this in, 6250 times, or parentheses, 1.0275 carat 10, and you hit enter, you get not what that got. 6250 times 1.0275. Oh my goodness, 25 tens and 10 years. 
for the 25th. So if I do that again, 6250 parentheses 1.0275 carat 25, you get the 12,314.75 blah 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 blah. And you can tell over here there's the 12,315 they rounded to the nearest whole number. So if I do it again for 50, and again, you can do the algebra, because this time we know T, so we can do the algebra. You can plug in 50, or again, all I did was went to Y equals and typed this in, and then went to the table and checked out the data for 25 and for 50 years later, because that's what 1940 would be. That'd be 50 years later. This was 25 years later. So then we have to predict when the population reached 50,000. So now they're telling me to make the final population 50,000. That is 6250, 1.0275 to the T. And again, now we're back to having T in the air. We don't know how to solve that. I mean, we not yet. We don't have the algebra tools to get T out of the air, so we're going to Y1, Y2. And if I calculate the intersection point, there's my window if you want to see it. They intersect when x is 76.65, and then my y would be the 500,000, or 50,000, sorry. So what that means is it's going to take approximately 77 years, but they want to know when that will be. Well, if this all started in 1890, and I add 77 years to that, that's going to put it in the year 1967. The population of Smallville would be 50,000. Alright, so radioactive decay it says the half-life of a certain radioactive substance is 14 days. There are 6.6 .6 grams present initially. Okay, this is again, it's a population control. Pop the population is this radioactive substance. But remember, when you're talking about half-life, that just means your base becomes 0.5. It becomes a half. Okay, so it says express the amount of substance remaining as a function of time t. Well, my population, we'll say f of t, I guess I should say for time, is going to be the initial amount, which was 6.6 .6 grams, times a half, to the time over the half-life of the substance. And it tells me that the half-life of the substance is 14 days. Okay? So there's my expression. And then it says, when will there be less than one gram remaining? So now I'm trying to figure out when will 6.6 .6 times 0.5 to the t over 14 be less than 1? So this will be my y1, this would be my y2, alright, and if I type that in, there's my y1, y2 is 1, there's the window I set, and they cross at, again, I can't do this using algebra because I have a variable in the exponent, okay, so it crosses when x is approximately 38 days. After about 38 days, there's going to start being less than a gram of the stuff remaining. Okay, it says, same thing, suppose the half-life of a certain radioactive substance is 20 days and there's 5 grams present initially. Find the time when there will be 1 gram of the substance remaining. So if I write my function, as a function of time, that's going to be the initial amount present, which is 5. Half-life means my base is 0.5. And my time is, I don't know, but the half-life is every 20 days. And they want to know, find the time when there will be 1 gram of the substance left. So they want to know, when is this? going to equal 1 gram. Again, we can't use algebra yet because my exponent has a variable in it. So we're going to have to do this graphically. So I type in 5 times 0.5 to the x over 20 for y1 and I plug in 1 for y2. It doesn't matter what order you type those in. 
I set my window so that I can see the intersection, and here you can see that it crosses when x is 46 if we round, and y is 1. Okay, so it'll take approximately 46 days. All right, it says find the altitude above sea level at which the atmospheric pressure is four pounds per inch squared. Well, to do that, you have to have this formula for pressure at a certain height. And again, you just have to, it's just a formula. Somebody's already figured it out, that initial value and what you have to divide by for um, pressure. Okay, so it says find the altitude, which is a height, so we're looking for a height. When they're giving me the pressure is 4 pounds per inch squared, okay? So they're telling me what the pressure is at a certain height. That's going to be 4 equals 14.7 times 0.5 to the x over 3.6. And again, I'm going to plug that in because at this point we do not know how to get x out of the air. So if I type this in for y1 and y2 and calculate the intersection point, it says that the time will take approximately 7, oh no, we're not finding time, we're finding altitude. The height is going to actually be about 7 uh, inches. Yeah? Alright. Watuga High School has 1,200 students. Bob, Carol, Ted, and Alice start a rumor which spreads logistically. Logistically means it's going to be that S shape. Okay, It's going to have those two asymptotes and cross the X axis somewhere. And it gives me the logistic model which says S of T equals, in other words, the number of students that know the rumor at any given time T is 1,200 divided by 1 plus 39 times E to the negative 0.9 T. Well, guys, at the beginning of the rumor, at the beginning of the rumor, we're talking about time being zero, okay? So it says, how many students have heard the rumor by the end of day zero? So they're telling me to change time to zero. All right. So if I change T to zero, I'm going to have the number of students who know at the end of day zero is 1,200 divided by 1 plus 39e e to the negative 0.9 times zero. Well, that is going to be... Negative 0.9 to the 0 is 0. Anything to the 0 degree is 1. So what I'm left with is 1,200 over 1 plus 39 times 1, which is 39. That gives me 1,200 divided by 1 plus 39 is 40, which gives me the number of students who know at the end of day 0 is 1,200 divided by 40, which should be 30. So at the end of day zero, 30 people know the room. Started off with just four people knowing. Then it says, how long does it take for a thousand students to hear the rumor? So now they're telling me the number of students that know the rumor. So I'm setting this side equal to a thousand equals 1200 over one plus 39 e to the negative negative 0.9 t. Okay, so now we're going to, again, I can't get that out of the air. So we're going to do y1, y2, and calculate the intersection point. So if I do that, I type in this for y1, 1,000 for y2, set my window to handle the data, calculate the intersection point, which says it's going to take approximately 6 days. And at the end of 6 days, at least 1,000 students will have heard the room. Okay. All right. It says use the 1900 to 2000 data in table 3.9 and exponential regression to predict the U.S. population for 2003. 
Compare the result with the listed value for 2003. So we have to calculate an exponential regression for the data, which means you're going to type in all of these under L1 and all of these under L2. However, if they want you to, I mean, you don't want to plug in 1900 for your year. Let's call this starting at zero. So if that's zero, 1910 would be 10 years later, 1920 would be 20 years. So we're counting by tens. So 70, 80, 90, 100. And if I tell right here, then that's only three years difference. So these are the X values you're going to type in for L1. These are the Y values you're going to type in for L2. And then you're going to calculate an exponential regression and you should it'll, it'll ask you where do you want you to get your x's from where do you want to get your y's from just enter through all of that and then it should give you here's the equation y equals a b to the x and they're giving me a and b so my function is going to be y, to, y equals let's go with 81 times b, which is 1.01, let's say, to the end. There's my exponential regression. Then it says, use the equation to predict the population for 2003 algebraically. Well, 2003 is 103 years later, so if I change x to 103, I get y equals 81 times 1.01 to the hundred and third. And if I type that in, 81 parentheses, 1.01 carat, 0.03, I get y equals 81.024. Okay. So that would have said, oh my gosh, I did it to the point oh three, to 103, Tim's in, sorry guys, 81 parentheses, 1.01 parentheses, carat 103, not point oh three, and I get 225.73, okay, so according to the, to the table, in the year 2003, the population should be 225, almost 226 million. Okay? Is it million? Yeah, million. All right? But, and so they want to know, it says compare graphically. Well, on the, on the graph, if I calculate intersection points, what the heck? Oh, oh, oh. No. Oh. Hmm. Well, when I calculate the intersection point, I get that it's going to take 128 years, almost 129 years, to get to actually 290. Yeah, this is pretty low. This is like 10 years behind or so. Hmm. All right, so obviously, what does this mean? Well, it probably kind of means my model is not a very good one. And you know, I probably shouldn't have rounded this so much. That makes a big difference. Let's see what I would have gotten if I wouldn't have rounded. Let's do 1.0127599115 to the 103. Let's see what we get there. 1.0127599115. That's a little closer. See, without rounding, look, I got 298.989.99 actually. So I get almost 299. So if I don't round, this puts me actually a little bit over. Wow, do you see the difference rounding can make? Don't round.
just from putting these extra decimals in, look at the difference that I got in my answer. Proves my point. Rounding is bad. All right, so um, describe how exponential growth is used to model real-life problems. Population. Describe how exponential decay is used to model real-life problems when you're talking about half-life of substances. That's where decay is used a lot, okay? Half-life of substances, um, depreciation, but we didn't really do anything like that. All right, so we are at homework, which means we are done. Happy homeworking, and I will see you next time.